Hello and welcome to the Philippines. Uh, today we're going to take a look, uh, take a little trip through the province uh, of Liloan. Uh, province life generally means outside of the city, outside of the big city, um, even though every place in the Philippines is in a, uh, in a province. Now this is Liloan, which is just north of Cebu City, Mandawi City area. Uh, cemetery there on the left. They can be very active places uh, many times. Sometimes people living in some cemeteries here in Cebu City. Um, anyway, one, one reason I want to uh, talk about this is I want to get feedback from many of you who are living in the province, have lived in the province, plan to live in the province, uh, what's your experience? You're outside the big city, so you, you've got smaller mall probably. You don't have the larger mall. You have to come into the city occasionally to get the things that uh, you want or need. Uh, I know that there are lumber stores, hardware stores uh, in a lot of these smaller uh, cities and towns. Um, what about security? Do you have uh, issues with securing your property wherever you're living? If you're if you're renting a house, if you've built a house, uh, what about dealing with the local authorities, your barangay captains, uh, over issues you might have? What's the situation with brownouts, losing your electricity? Uh, how often? Uh, what do you do when that happens? When it's uh, unbearably warm outside? Uh, how's the internet in your area? Is it? Uh, I know they're they're expanding the internet and even fiber optic into many of the different provinces, but it's taking time. There's still big gaps in the coverage. How about transportation? Do you have your own vehicle? Do you take the tricycles, the motorbike taxis, the hobble hobbles, uh, buses, that type of thing? I know that uh, you can travel very cheaply and. Uh, I'll going down almost any road you can find somebody to give you a ride for a small change. Now this is my partner going up to uh, take a look at some property up here in Little Owen and she took uh, one motorbike coming up from Cebu City to Little Owen town and from there the the motorbike driver from Cebu City was not comfortable going on the back roads and uh, he said because there are a lot of local uh, hobble hobble drivers and uh, sometimes I guess they can take offense if somebody from out of town is giving giving a ride uh, into the uh, local communities I guess so he dropped her off on the main road and he grabbed another and I believe this cost her 20 or 30 pesos this particular ride. Uh, 25 pesos, about 50 US cents. So you can travel pretty cheaply out here. Couple draws I know of many expats that live out here is a slower lifestyle, a cheaper lifestyle. You should be able to save a fair amount of money. They're depending upon uh, if you're in a house, if you have to spend a lot on maintenance, if you're building a house, a uh, number of different things that could raise your uh, cost of living out there, but generally renting a place, building a place, the, the cost of land uh, is, is less expensive out there. Now I've got a, a Filipino friend who just uh, assumed the mortgage on some property south of Cebu City. And uh, people have people have bought into two properties at a point in time, and then during this past year, the pandemic, as they call it, uh, they have lost their jobs, lost their livelihood, can no longer make payments. So there are distressed properties, people that need to not only sell their property, people are selling their motorbikes, uh, their the pawn shops are, are doing great business, people are going in and and uh, pawning off their jewelry and anything else they have of, of any value at all, just to try to survive. I started the video with the uh, with the side road, the back road, uh, 
part of this trip, and now this is this is actually coming into Lillowen from Consolation, Consolation. Pronounce that right. Uh, it's uh, kind of like the Spanish spelling, Consolation. And uh, main road that goes north and south, uh, all the length of Cebu Island, which is a long island. Uh, Lillowen is a town of about. Uh, 120,000 people. It's a first-class city, what they call first-class city. Uh, it's got a mall or two, a hospital, I believe, in that area. Uh, Liloan uh, is the name that is named after a whirlpool where the currents come, come together outside of the town, out in the sea. Uh, creates a bit of a whirlpool. I was looking for a picture online of that and I was not successful. Uh, but uh, Lilo is a basically a whirlpool. So Lilo An means a, a place where there is a whirlpool. Lilo An. And uh, anyway, interesting. They've got a they've got a number of different things. They've got uh, 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 a couple of uh, tourist type places up there. They've got a number of subdivisions up there. Uh, I think they're building one or more condominiums up in that area. Uh, you're, you're out of town. If you, if you need to go in early in the morning, there's a lot of traffic. Just like any city in the world, uh, you have morning rush hour traffic, you have afternoon rush hour traffic. Uh, but going in can, can be a bit of a bear. It will be nice one day when they uh, when they widen this road and uh, there's talk has been talk uh, for some time of some kind of rail system eventually that's many years off uh, that would be nice uh, there is uh, also talk of more uh, what you'd call ferry taxis ferries running north and south to transport people take them off of the off of the highways and put them on the sea out there I think that would be an excellent, excellent idea. You've, uh, those of you watching many of my videos uh, for the last couple months, notice a lot of cloudy skies. And uh, the Philippines uh, have, have been affected by what's called La Nina. And it is bringing us a, normally we would have a lot of sunny skies here in January, February, March, April, May. Uh, but we're getting uh, a couple of months at least, if not more, of more cloudy, more rain uh, because of uh, that weather effect that La Nina uh, has on us. And uh, some, of this, uh, some of this rain is actually, uh, it's appreciated. In 2015, when I first came here, there was a drought during that year. In 2019, there was a drought much of the Philippines and it affected the water levels. There were many wells that went dry, uh, many areas even in Cebu City where people would have to get up 2, 3 in the morning, go meet a water truck with their containers, fill up their, wa uh, fill up their containers for the day or for a couple of days. And sometimes taxi drivers told me we'd, we'd get up, go down, wait, and, and the water truck would never show up. So all kinds of issues with that. So. You need to replenish those ground sources of water. They also, there are plans to drill many, many more uh, deeper wells. So many of the wells apparently are not very deep. And therefore, when the water level goes down, uh, that obviously creates an, an issue. That's uh, wherever, you, wherever you move, that's one thing you want to ask about. Um, are, is, there, is the water source uh, consistent, sustainable? Uh, or are there times of year when you're going to run out of water? I know we're over on Bohol, and I was going to stay at a resort, real nice uh, area. And they said, we don't have any water. You know, they, they filled buckets of water in the CR, the bathroom, uh, with seawater, I believe, that you could use to pour to flush the toilet. But uh, they couldn't cook because they had no water. I guess they, they could have brought in bottled water like uh, most people, but... Uh, they weren't doing very much of that anyway at that time. The Philippines is a small nation. Uh, if you put uh, take all the land mass of all the islands, 
Uh, it is about the size of the state of Arizona, about the size of the state of Nevada. Uh, Italy is a little bit larger than uh, la in land area, but it's pretty densely populated. It's got uh, about 115 million people. Arizona has about 7 million people, so drop drop 100 million people uh, into the state of Arizona, uh, primarily uh, poorer people, and uh, see what kind of issues you have in, in housing and uh, medical care, all that education. And here it makes it a little more difficult. Uh, you don't have a consistent, a you have many islands, so each island has its own issues and uh, with water and other infrastructure. So there are many, uh, many options. Um, I always advise people probably not to live on the uh, east coast of Leyte, Samar, Luzon. They generally get hit uh, when the typhoons come through those areas, those areas take the brunt of those hits, and you get flooding, you get winds, you get uh, damage. Uh, so there's there's more risk involved. Uh, there are a couple of active vol volcanoes, Taal volcano, Mayan volcano. Uh, I probably wouldn't want to live uh, within five or ten kilometers of those uh, volcanoes, although the Taal but Taal Volcano up, up in Luzon, uh, which blew about a year ago. Uh, still a very popular area. Uh, subdivisions, resorts and hotels up not very far from that area. Uh, you live in a, you live in a, uh, if I was gonna live in the province outside the bigger city, I would, uh, I would choose to live outside of Cebu City Ilo Ilo City would probably be my second choice. Uh, Bacolod City, Davao City, Baguio is if you want to get into cooler climates. Dumaguete, you go up into the mountains out of Dumaguete. Valencia up there is becoming more popular. As you go up in elevation, uh, things cool down. Uh, so that is an option. You're not going to use as much, much electricity. Another thing to think about in the province, uh, like over on Camotes Island, I think uh, they use a diesel generator for the elect electricity on the island, number of diesel generators, and therefore your electric rates over there uh, have been substantially higher than many other places. There are other islands, I think, as well. So uh, check your electric rates. Anyway. Quick uh, thoughts, uh, looking for your input and thoughts about it. Uh, so thanks for coming along. Stay safe, and I'll see you next time.